A third of caregivers spend 10 or more hours a week providing physical or emotional support for a loved one. 63% have said they reached their breaking point over the past year but had to keep going. Today, we recognize these selfless individuals on National Caregiver Day. Our Nikki Wesley spoke with a local Burlington woman about her experience caring for her mother. Carla Velastegui's journey as a caregiver began in her last year of high school when she started looking after her mother Gina, who has early onset Parkinson's. Now, 14 years later, she's working full time from home in health technology and constantly balancing her responsibilities. And there are some days when I'm, it's heavier on the work side and I'm a lot more focused on that end and I need to um, ask for help for individuals and my supports to be there for my mother. Uh, but then there are other times when um, maybe I'm more focused on caregiving and whether that's driving to appointments, calling um, providers, picking up the meds, um, making sure that she has the right equipment at home for her everyday um, mobility. Um, so it's really kind of a, a, a reshifting balance. There are approximately 3.3 million caregivers in Ontario. I think sometimes when you think of a caregiver, or at least for myself, I originally we used to think, oh, it's uh, you know an individual um, who's maybe retired caring for their elderly spouse. But that's not the case. There are so many different types of caregivers out there. Um, and I think it's really important to raise awareness to that. So there are so many young caregivers that I've met through my own journey, through sharing with people around me and in my communities that are also, you know, trying to go through school, also trying to figure out their career, also going through their own life, uh, personal life, uh, milestones in a way. And so for me, it's been really important to increase awareness of young caregivers and also of working caregivers because we are out there contributing to our economies, to our communities, to our workplaces. Um, and I think there's just so much that we bring to the table out there that um, I really we need more recognition. For people who are just starting out as caregivers, she shares this advice. I think that self-empathy is extremely important during those transitions and especially as a caregiver and as you get more adjusted to the role is being being understanding of yourself, your needs, and realizing that at this point you're not just um, managing and dealing with your own emotions and your own pains, but you're also taking on the emotions and pains and difficulties of someone else that you really care about. And so that self-empathy is extremely important and knowing that you're really trying your best. Carla also believes communication is important because people in your life can't support you if they aren't aware of your situation. So for example, in my case, sometimes that might mean I start my workday a lot er earlier such that I can take my mom to an appointment during lunchtime. Or it can mean that I'm working after hours so that if I need to stop during the day to support with meal prep or to support with some activities of daily living, uh, there's that understanding. But again, I've been able to get to that point by sharing with my manager and if you're comfortable sharing with your team, your surrounding team, so that they know what you're going through, how they can support you, and, and in a way allow you to also be successful. Reporting for Halton News, I'm Nikki Wesley. Now, the executive director of the Ontario Caregiver Organization, Amy Coolpal, is a caregiver herself. We spoke with her to find out what little acts of kindness you can do to help support a caregiver in your life. We certainly have learned through our annual spotlight report that caregivers, more and more of them every year, are saying they're feeling burnt out, but they have no choice to but to keep going. They want to honor their caregiving responsibilities, but they're often doing that, balancing it with work, with family, with other commitments in the community. And so it's a lot. And caregivers tell us that there are a number of things that can be helpful. Number one is acknowledgement. Just to say, I recognize that you are a caregiver. And that may be somebody in your own family, it may be a neighbor, it may be somebody in the community. But there may also be practical things that you can do, those acts of kindness that can really make a difference in people's lives. Sometimes it's just a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. It might be a meal and it might be something that you are in a position to do to support them. You know, we've just come out of a season of snow shoveling. Hopefully that's it for the season. Uh, but, uh, you know, whether it's snow shoveling or gardening or picking up the mail, pet care. There's lots of different things that people can do based on the needs of the individual and, and what support they might need. So opening up that conversation with a gesture, 
that, that you know is going to be meaningful for them might mean that you could support them in that caregiving journey that they're on. The caregivers are doing this 365 days a year. And so we encourage people to think about those acts of kindness, that recognition. And of course, we'd love for them to visit our website at ontariocaregiver.ca, where we have free resources, programs, services, and a 24-7 helpline just for caregivers. So if nothing else, we would love for people to come and visit us and find out what supports are available that might be useful for caregivers across the province.